Welcome everyone to today's Mind Health webinar. Um, before we get started, just a little note and reminder um, that we are holding our last event today of 2023. Next week, we will not have a meditation or any other event. Um, and we will also not have something the first week of January. Our first event um, of 2024 is going to be a webinar on the 10th of January um, or the 11th of January, depending on where you are. Um, and that will be with Patrick. And the following week on the 17th, we are going to have a webinar webinar with Kim, um, and then we'll get back into our regular um, schedule of having um, meditations and webinars every other week. Um, so today we have Anne with us. Hello, Anne. Anne is going to introduce today's guest, and we're going to get started. Hello, Emma, and hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the last um, Mind Health uh, webinar for 2023 before we get to 2024 and all that it promises and we're very lucky today to have Jason Christoph who some of you may know his work he um, runs an international uh, um, institute where he uh, teaches people to overcome self-sabotage and um psychological reprogramming um and he started this as when he had a gym and he was a personal trainer and realized that it was very difficult to help people uh, be better versions of themselves so he learned a lot about mind control brainwashing behavior modification and psychological manipulation that we are all um vulnerable to and unaware of and actually the more we are aware of how this happens uh, the more we can be in control and be better versions of ourselves so um he teaches his students to use their knowledge in these areas and reprogram themselves and their clients into better versions of themselves on all levels he believes that the social decay that we are openly seeing in the world has only come about because key players in our society are using this manipulative psychology against the most of humanity. And it's actually never been clearer than in the last three years. And some more, we may be more or less aware of that, maybe something new, it may be something that we've been talking a lot about. And we've had some webinars on behavioral modi modification and behavioral strategies that have been used on us from higher than government levels. So Jason, we're going to have a great presentation because um, he wants to um, share with us that um, in order to survive and thrive in the upcoming years, um, he believes that we all must understand these processes to protect ourselves from future psychological operations. So thank you so much, Jason. I'm really interested to hear what you're going to share with us. I've read a lot of your work and seen some of the documentaries you've been part of producing. So um, I think we're going to learn a lot and it's going to be a huge advantage to us and um, our communities. So thanks so much for giving us the time. Well, thanks, Anne. Thanks, Emma, for having me on. I really, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. And I was told uh, it was a presentation to end out your year, a presentation close to Christmas. So I was told to keep it light. I'm going to keep it educational. I'm going to keep it light. And um, I think what I'll do to start is I'll share my screen. I'm just going to set up my screen. If you don't mind me starting right away, Anne, is that okay? And are you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you still there? Is Emma, do you see my screen? Yes, I, I can see your screen. Yep, we see it. You're good. Oh, to go. good. You're good. I'm all good. I'm all good to start? Yep. Absolutely. Take okay. it away. Okay. <laughs> Thank great. you very much for the opportunity. So today 
We're going to do a general walkthrough of mind control, keeping it simple, how it works, and the solutions. So this will be sort of the 30-minute breakdown of what I'm going to do. We have, number one, I'm going to explain and sort of document here mind control and the visible power of the majority. So there's a lot of group pressure involved with mind control. And the Ash Conformity Experiment is something that'll sort of visibly show that power. There, in the second part of our presentation today, I'll show the invisible power of how the majority can modify your behavior. I'll explain how group pressure mind control works. I'll show you that uh, you can easily weaponize group pressure against the public to some very nefarious ends. I will explain the speed by which the human mind processes the pressure to comply with the group. I'll show you that the governments purposely do this <laughs> to you and your family. I'll show you how interested the government is in their secret mind control experiments or a little slice thereof. I'll show you the role that your TV plays in mind controlling you and your family. And I will show you only one facet of the group pressure mind control that's circulating in the media today. And then, of course, I was told I must focus on the solutions and not scare people. And I completely um, want to do that. I want to give people the solutions so they can sidestep the mind control and have a better 2024. So this will be the visible sort of exhibition of how group pressure can modify a person's behavior. This is the famous Ash Conformity Group Pressure Experiment. The results speak for themselves. It's only a two minute video, so let's take a look. The Ash Experiment is one of psychology's oldest and most popular pieces of research. A volunteer is told that he's taking part in a visual perception test. What he doesn't know is that the other participants are actors and he's the only person taking part in the real test, which is actually about group conformity. Please begin. The experiment you'll be taking part in today involves the perception of line length. Your task will be simply to look at the line here on the left and indicate which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. So for example, if you the actors right have been told to match the wrong lines. The volunteer will be monitored to see if he gives the correct answer or if he goes along with the opinion of the group and gives the wrong answer. In the first test, the correct answer is two. Uh, one. 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 Two. One. Once again, the correct answer is two. Three. 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 The ash experiment has been repeated many times and the results have been uh, supported again and again. We will conform to the group. Again, we're very social creatures. We're very much aware of what the people around us think uh, we want to be liked, we don't want to be seen to rock the boat, so we will go along with the group. Even if we don't believe what people are saying, we'll still go along. One. 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 Group dynamics is one of the most powerful forces in human psychology. Uh, one. One. You can see here that the power of the group is very very extremely powerful to make someone change their opinion and almost make someone ignore reality. And this is what a lot of the psychological operations were based on and that we've all witnessed from 2020 forward. What is the group saying, thinking, or doing? The bigger the group, the more we feel the fear of going up against the group, and therefore the more we comply. So group pressure is a huge dynamic in psychological operations. The Ash Conformity Experiment, that was a very visible and obvious uh, demonstration of group pressure. Let me show you a demonstration of group pressure, which can sometimes be synthesized down to simply the most repetitive content. Let me show you sort of uh, indirect group pressure and how it works on these three teenagers. These three teenagers are the victims 
of a mind control experiment and a mind control expert. They are typically just like the public. They believe they cannot be put under mind control. And the, the mind control expert sort of frames himself as a bumbling buffoon. And this just helps the mind control bite a little deeper into these three teenagers who uh, have their minds hacked right on video. Let's take a look about how easy it is to mind control someone and how quickly it can be done. These days, you don't have to be a doctor or a magician to have power over people. Social media can give anyone the ability to influence the masses, and that influence can be quite profitable. So to find out if I have what it takes to be an influencer, I enlisted the help of three social media celebrities with over six million combined followers. Meet Griffin. What's up, you guys? Ditto. Hey, guys. And Andrew. Hey, guys, it's Andrew. What's up, vlog? We met at the World of Fruit, a selfie lover's paradise, for a lesson in influencing. So listen, I thought maybe we could scroll through my feed a little bit. Maybe you can give me some tips. For sure. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. I asked them to be honest with me, and I regretted it immediately. What's the cover of this? Cover. Is it intriguing? Is it captivating? Are you getting an audience from it? Mm, I hadn't thought of that. Okay. How's this? It's a hot day. Ice Ice Baby for yeah. that? Yeah. Remember that song? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I'd say we look tray chic, right? Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Love swings. My caption idea was, uh, you are getting very sleepy. <laughs> they did not hold back. This is kind of creepy. <laughs> caption is, uh, Nothing like a tray of cold ones. Well, it looks just... a little forced, but like, it's not to the point where it's like, oh, you know? Oh. There was a lot of constructive criticism. I don't know if I love the filter. Yeah, the filter, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And some not so constructive. And my caption was, he's channeling his inner Gallagher. For your age demographic, I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered, does being an influencer mean that you are less susceptible to being influenced? Yes. Interesting. Did you guys notice the uh, red cloth yeah. behind here? Yeah. Okay. I was here a week ago, took a selfie. Oh. I'll give you guys a little peek here. Just wanted to, you know, wet your ad? appetite. Well, basically, it's going to be my first endeavor at being an influencer. Okay. Speaking of which, since these guys get paid to promote products, I posed a challenge. I gave them 50 unglamorous items to choose from. Gravy boat, toilet paper, whatever this is. <laughs> and gave them free reign of 20 different selfie-licious rooms to snap a pic. Before I showed them my magic, I wanted to see them work their magic. I'm gonna give you guys five <laughs> minutes to start now. Have at it. Okay, that's not flexible. Selfie six down, come on back. Nice. Was it fun? Yeah, it, was... it was a blast. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, I had a lot of fun. All right, you probably have hundreds of photos on your roll right now. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. So here's what I'd like you guys to do is each of you scroll through everything you just took and pick one photo with one product in one location that you think would make the most unique Instagram post, okay? Add a hashtag to it. Don't let each other see. And then you're all gonna post at the exact same time, okay? Ready? Post. Bones down. Is the suspense killing you guys? I wanna see it. Yes. Before we get to that, I'm just curious. Um, raise your hand if you chose a pick with the stapler. Oh, Hemorrhoid donut. First aid tape. A sexy coat hanger. Raise your hand if you chose the ice cube tray. Wait. Drama. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait. Um, I have questions. Wait. <laughs> I like you. Hold Wait, on a what? Second. <laughs> Let's see. Of the many places to take a photo here, raise your hand if you posted a pic in front of the mirror wall. The disco pineapple. Big banana. Raise your hand if you chose to take a picture on the watermelon swing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I see the posts? Yes, you can. I, Show each other. I don't like this. 
Let's go. Wait, are you kidding me? Yeah, what? I'm, I'm just, sorry. I'm sorry. How does this... <laughs> Wait, but that's... <laughs> that's so interesting. It is interesting, yeah. Because you're telling I was here a week ago and I took a I picture. Bet, yeah, you were. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if it really was influencer worthy, but turns out it was. Oh. No. The ice cube tray on the watermelon swing in front of my face. The hashtag is Trey Cool. What were your hashtags? I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Trey Cool. I'm... Shook it. Well... I bet you have the same question they have. So my question is how? The answer is simple. I wasn't here to take a lesson in influencing. I was here to teach it. Do you think that you are less susceptible to being influenced? Yeah. He loves swings. Swing. You are getting very sleepy. <laughs> I'd say we look trashy, right? Very cool. 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 Is it intriguing? Is it captivating? Nothing like a tray of cold ones. Nice, nice baby. Banana. Yeah. This is kind of creepy. My caption was, he's channeling his inner Gallagher. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> Why are you in my brain? Mm. How does it feel to be influenced? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you can have me. Yeah, okay, confusing. Uh, wow. How quick can some, like a mind control expert, change the behavior of people that don't understand mind control can be very dangerous. How quick can it be done? You just have a demonstration of how quick mind control can be enacted on people that have no idea how to defend themselves. So exactly what went on with these three teenagers and this mind control expert called Justin Williams, your subconscious is obsessed with the group safety. This is comes as standard equipment on the human body and the subconscious operates outside your conscious awareness. Its only job is to make you safe. It loves you and wants you to be secure at all times. It has a process by which it tries to accomplish the safety and security for you. Your subconscious looks for repetition in your environment to assess what the bigger herd is saying, thinking, or doing. It wants to know what the bigger herd is saying, thinking, or doing. It judges the repetition of your environment to judge that. And then it tries to make you emulate, mirror, and mimic it in an attempt to bond with the bigger herd. This is this process operates like a cut healing. The cut healing is to make you safe. You also have no control or say so of your cut healing. This behavioral downloading sort of process, you're not aware of it, and it goes on 24 hours a day. You do not have a say. Your subconscious is always there to download the repetitive content, look for the bigger herd, and then try and make you bond with it through the adopting of that repetitive content. Justin Williams placed into their minds the first repetition the first repetition does nothing other than sitting there waiting to be triggered by a repetitive match. Two's a crowd in mind control, and the subconscious likes safety in the crowd, the group, the herd, the flock, or the wolf pack. Justin Williams then sent the teens into the back selfie room and allowed them a box of objects to pick from, which gave the subconscious the second repetition it needed to feel safer in the bigger group and to be drawn where Justin wanted them to go. Pay very close attention to this last line. Repetition is the group. Repetition drives the group pressure. Repetition denotes the bigger herd or wolf pack and leads the way in regards to where you need to go to find safety. This process is outside your conscious awareness. That's why these teenagers were hacked by only two to three repetitions in one particular category. Here's a good, very short video of how group pressure and repetition can be weaponized against the public. This man is Darren Brown. He's from the United Kingdom. He's one of the best mind control experts in the world. He sets up... Uh, a Netflix special 
where you hire 70 actors to control the group pressure and the repetitive content of a two-hour experiment. In that experiment, it will end with this massive push of group pressure that will motivate one of the participants who doesn't know anything about this experiment to literally push a man off the side of a building and kill him live on video. The man's on top of a 15-story building. He's not a regular man, though. He is an actor. And the victim or the mark or the person who doesn't know this is one big stage so show of group pressure is the person that's going to be asked to kill this man on video. This experiment was run four times by Darren Brown. Three out of the four people bent to the group pressure, bent to the repetition, killed the man live on video, pushed him off the side of the building. Let's take a look at how easy group pressure and repetitive content-based mind control can be weaponized to make people do the unimaginable, which of course many participated in from 2020 forward. Okay, here we go. Why is it wrong? I, I wanna talk to the auctioneer. You did talk to the auctioneer and you helped him set these prices. It's completed. It's just the- Benny, Benny. Pills, pills, pills. Chris, yeah. what, Chris, I'll call an ambulance, find the pills and bring them back. Chris is enmeshed in a web of lies. And that's important. I need him to feel like there's only one way out when he's told to commit murder. My name is Darren Brown, and the question we're considering is simple. Can we be manipulated through social pressure to commit murder? 70 people coming in here. They can't see this. Take them by the knees. 70 actors will be playing out a meticulously planned and rehearsed scenario to manipulate this man who has no idea he's being filmed. Come on, guys, what are we gonna do? He's a millionaire, he's gonna make sure you go to jail. This show is about how readily we hand over authorship of our lives every day. Just give him one big push. Can social compliance be used to make someone push a living, breathing human being to their death? Welcome to the push. One of the most intense video demonstrations of group pressure compliance I've ever watched. It's very censored on the internet. If you need a copy of the push, please email me personally at info at jchristoff.com and I can send you that. Now, what's the speed at which the subconscious assesses the group and complies to the group pressure? What is the speed by which the subconscious is tabulating the repetitive content of your environment, which used to be natural, and now the repetitive content of your environment is man-made? How fast is this tabulation of repetitive content uh, occurring? The subconscious mind is, processes far more information than the conscious mind. One study suggests that the subconscious mind processes about 400 billion bits of information per second, and the impulses travel in your neurological system at a speed of 100,000 miles an hour. The conscious mind is the part of the mind you're listening to this um, presentation with. You think with the conscious mind, it can only process 2,000 bits of information per second, and its impulses only travel 100 to 150 miles per hour. This unconscious safety-based mechanism that's always downloading repetitive content and trying to make you adopt it as your own in search of safety in the bigger group, this is the speed by which it occurs and you do not have control of it. The people ruling us know this. They can basically make us do anything they wish, especially people who don't understand this technology. You can see what Darren Brown did to those four, four people inside the push. If you watch the entire presentation, we have some news clips here from 2020, 2021, where the governments are bragging about using this sort of technology against the public to nudge them or push them or psycho psychologically manipulate them in the direction of their desires. Canada was bragging about it. Um, the top right-hand newspaper clip is actually from 2012, where Barack Obama used or sort of changed the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, and he legalized the use of propaganda against the American public. It was illegal at that time. 
for the U.S. government to weaponize psychological manipulation against the public. And Barack Obama changed that knowing that uh, the COVID operation that was on the books was coming up and that you would need to use the propaganda to get the herd running in a very particular direction. Of course, the bottom right-hand clip is from the UK regarding the SAGE, the Safety Advisory Group for Emergencies and the Bit Corporation, the Behavioral Insights Team, using the same weaponized psychology against the public to make them run east looking for a sunset and have them rearrange the furniture on the deck of the Titanic. Let's see the role of TV in mind controlling you and your family This is also why you were sent home for two weeks to flatten the curve so your instructor, the TV, could have its way with you, and the TV has very special hypnotic powers that changes brainwave state, makes someone more suggestible to command, and we'll have some professionals explain just how dangerous watching the TV is for you and your family, but again, they wanted you inside your own home cornered by your two weeks during the the two weeks to flatten the curve. uh, People who didn't have a good tolerance for what I called unstructured time watched more TV. And I would say this is probably true for use of the Internet, too. If if you don't feel comfortable with yourself and you need to fill up that time when you're by yourself and you and you don't have anything else to do, then what are you going to do? Well, you're going to gravitate to the easiest most inexpensive medium that was ever invented, which is virtually free, television, and and fill up your your mind with something else. So it's a kind of form of escapism. The effects of television on the mind are probably one of the most studied aspects of our society. And one of the things that takes place in the mind is that the frontal lobe is being bypassed. Within minutes of sitting down and watching television, the frontal lobe activity simply goes almost to nothing. The frontal lobe of the brain is the seat of spirituality, morality, and the will. It's actually the analytical portion of our brain, and it's actually the decision maker. And so uh, it's a crucial aspect in regards to our future success and happiness is how well our frontal lobe is functioning. And uh, unfortunately, entertainment television suppresses the frontal lobe of the brain. Uh, Actually, in about 90 seconds of uh, viewing it, uh, the frontal lobe uh, circulation uh, begins to go down and uh, it um, actually has an adverse effect. And, you know, the interesting thing is people watch entertainment television often due to the fact that they feel a little depressed or anxious and it kind of calms them. But in reality, it's a very short-term fix, and it's going to complicate things in the long run. Of course, I'm most known for the one who treats depression uh, and anxiety. In fact, we treat the most severe forms of depression and anxiety. And uh, what we have found is virtually every depressed patient will have about a 40% decrease in circulation and activity of the frontal lobe of the brain. There's a huge battle for your frontal lobe. People with active frontal lobes can't easily be put under mind control because it's a logical and analytical part of the mind. And as you can see, staring at a screen, whether it's a movie screen or a TV screen, inhibits the frontal lobe and also makes the person more compliant to command. And so let's look at another short clip about how your governments have always been interested in mind controlling you. How old is their desire to mind control you? Can government even exist without mind control? I'm I'm sure everybody's aware that even the word government uh, is from the word govern, which is French for to control. And ment is Latin or mentis, M-E-N-T-I-S is mentis for the mind. The word government actually means mind control. So it's part and parcel of everything the government does to control your repetitive content, have you stare at a screen. And don't forget the staring at the screen that shuts off the prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe. This is the basis of hypnosis 
sort of an older form of hypnosis where there would be someone with a pocket watch on a chain and they would say, you know, watch, look at the watch, stare at the watch. Don't take your eyes off it. You're getting very sleepy. When you focus your eyes on a single point of attention, you do go into hypnosis when you stare at your TV screen or where you stare at a movie screen, you are in the same brainwave state as someone engaged in sta uh, stage hypnosis. The government knows this, and they also know there are other modalities to mind control. We'll take a quick look here about the depth of research that the government goes to to make sure you never awaken and never connect the dots and that you're always complying to command. Let's see the depth of the research, just maybe a three-minute uh, demonstration here. In the 19th century, Franz Mesmer's brand of hypnotism entertained countless audiences, which consequently evolved, both covertly and overtly, throughout the 20th century. CIA's Dr. George Estabrooks, a graduate of Harvard University and a Rhodes Scholar, finally created methods of reliable hypnotism, enabling its application to the science of social control. George Estabrooks was a Canadian-born psychologist whose career was at Colgate University in upstate New York. Um, as early as 1943 in his textbook Hypnotism, he described in great, great detail, uh, going back to the Second World War, taking um, Marines or other military people, using hypnosis and other programming on them to create a new personality. So he calls that Jones A and Jones B. And the new program personality would be given an assignment which could be a career, penetration, any kind of assignment. And the out front regular person would have total amnesia, complete lack of knowledge of the assignment. Estabrooks was a leading authority on hypnosis, programming soldiers during World War II to act as couriers who were not aware they were hypnotized operatives on a mission. In this manner, the OSS targeted political objectives through the covert methods of assassination and espionage leveraging the science of hypnotism. Where hands-off hypnotic and pharmacological methods fail, the physical application of actual electrical stimulus directly to the brain becomes the next logical step. In 1964, Yale neuroscientist Jose Delgado implanted radio-controlled electrodes into the brain of an aggressive bull in an attempt to control its behavior in a ring with a matador. With the push of a button, Delgado himself was able to stop the bull in mid-charge. He didn't stop with the bull, but also conducted experiments on cats, monkeys, and even human test subjects. You had people as young as 11 he was doing this to. One was a 16-year-old girl, and there's pictures in his books where she's kind of staring off into space, vacant, Another, she's strumming on a guitar. Another, she's pounding on the wall, all based on what button he's pushing on the transmitter box. Delgado developed what he called a stimosiever. This control of the public just isn't for stage entertainment, like Justin Williams with those three teenagers. This sort of technology, the psychology is weaponized against the public daily, the group pressure, the repetitive content, people following outside their conscious awareness, believing they're logical and rational citizens. And of course, in this short video clip, you could see there was psychological manipulation and hypnosis used to produce assassins that would potentially go and take care of en enemy targets. And you can see that this psychology potentially jumped the shark tank in 2020, where people were weaponized against themselves, weaponized against their family members, where they sort of volunteered to almost, for lack of a better word, assassinate themselves. So I'm going to take you down a road here regarding only one aspect of some of these primary mind control agendas that the state, what we call the state, has rolling against the public today. Don't forget repetitive content, 
wins the war inside your behavioral pathways. And also don't forget that when you stare at a screen, if you're watching a movie, watching a TV show, you lose control in blood flow and oxygenation and electrical conductivity in the prefrontal, uh, prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe. This is only one pillar of control that's going on. You will guarantee probably know absolutely nothing about it. I'm going to uh, reveal it here today. This is a clip from the movie The Born Identity, Jason Bourne with Matt Damon. And I'm not too sure if you're aware of the effort to get a shot in a movie like this that that literally takes in a tea a tea cup, uh, four coffee cups and a kettle and some milk. These are known as imprints. Here's your repetitive content regarding what they want you to do. But why coffee? Why is a lot of repetitive content in your films, in your TV shows? Why is it caffeine and coffee oriented? Well, you're going to be very surprised why they want you hypnotically, subconsciously, and unconsciously drifting over to coffee. And they definitely want, and this is, again, one pillar. This is one of their agendas, one of many. Can you imagine the difficulty in getting this shot in a movie where you have all the coffee cups shown in this manner? Very difficult. This is a, a short commercial for Cadillac. Um, is it just a commercial or something else going on in the realm of mind control? It's only one minute. I'm going to play it for about 40 seconds, stop it, and I will show you what you missed. I would also like to add that what you will miss in this commercial, don't worry, your subconscious did not miss it because I've already reviewed the speed by which it downloads repetitive content. So let's go through. Innovation isn't always about what you add, but what you're able to take away. Introducing Super Cruise, the world's first true hands-free driving system for the highway. Did you see it? And don't forget, I'm going to show you what you missed in that little 15-second opener. And this part of the mind doesn't know commercials from movies from tv shows from imagined thought to real life it's all one big movie so although there was only one repetitive message that i want you to focus on in this commercial there's so many other repetitive messages of equal pattern equal of it, they're just equal and again the repetitive message is downloaded by the subconscious to assess what the bigger herd is saying thinking or doing and then there's an invisible push through your neurological system to make you adopt that behavior to make you adopt those ideas to make you take in what the perceived bigger herd is doing you will mirror mimic and emulate the most repetitive content this wow. is what you missed you might not see just on sort of the construction uh, billboard there, you see free coffee. And it was a good uh, two second clip as the car was going by. But why is, what's, what, what's up with all this coffee imagery, c coffee repetition? Again, uh, is it guaranteed to affect everybody when I explain what it does? No, it's not but it upregulates a certain brainwave state. And I'll explain this uh, further on here in the presentation. But coffee is absolutely everywhere. It is the most repetitive content in all Hollywood film, hands down, because I've done so many movie reviews in this regard. And were you aware that in the movie Fight Club with Brad Pitt and Edward Norton, there was a Starbucks takeout coffee cup in absolutely every single scene? This is a one-minute explanation. Let's take a look. When deep space exploration ramps up, it'll be the corporations that name everything. 
the IBM Stellar Sphere, Microsoft Galaxy, and Starbucks. Whatever you thought mind control was or what it wasn't, this is what it is. It's the control of repetitive contact, uh, content in your film or media. It is there to hack your subconscious mind pathway and make you emulate the repetitive content. You saw how little repetitive content Justin Williams needed to hack those teenagers. What do you think will occur to movie movie audiences when there's a Starbucks takeout coffee cup in every scene of Fight Club, plus every other movie is riddled with coffee imagery and coffee imprints? Let's not also forget that in 1987, Starbucks was going to go bankrupt. It had six shops in Seattle. A man named Howard Schultz was attempting to buy it. He got outbid. But all of a sudden, there was these two very powerful men behind him that actually backed down the original purchaser and said, we're taking this deal and you're going to back down. And he knew what he was up against. So he backed down. Who were the two powerful men? William Gates Sr. and Bill Gates Jr. 1987. They helped Howard Schultz acquire Starbucks. It had six shops. There's 35,000 Starbucks now across the world. Why do you think someone like William Gates uh, Sr. and Bill Gates Jr. would want access to a coffee chain? What does coffee do to the brain? Why is coffee the number one imprint? And are you aware that mind control works like this? What is the end of agenda? Yes, maybe they want people drinking coffee, but what is the advantage to people the population, the citizenry, drinking the coffee. Let's take a look. To researchers at Wake Forest in North Carolina, where I underwent two MRI brain scans. This first scan with no caffeine in my system. Then I downed just one drink. Now my second MRI. This was my brain before caffeine. This was after. The difference was remarkable. It's like a 40% drop in the blood flow to your brain. So that's a lot. So before caffeine, with caffeine, the blood flow to my brain dropped Went about 40%. 40%. Really? Yeah. When it was actually measured, that gentleman was eyeballing it, was actually measured, it's 52%. And there's a lot of lack of blood flow, more, more in the prefrontal cortex there's an activation of the limbic system, which is the fight or flight system. When you're caffeinated, the body is afraid of caffeine and a frightened limbic system or frightened neurology is easier to put under mind control because caffeine is a poison. Poisons injure people. Injured animals need the herd more. Poisoned animals need the herd more. Poisoned animals chase group safety more. Poison is part and parcel of mind control operations. Let me see if I can get through oh, next. Here is NASA scientists experimenting with spiders. They would observe how spiders would spin their webs under certain psychoactive drug or narcotic influence. Caffeine is a psychoactive drug. Of course, psychoactive just means it um, changes brain function. Why do you think NASA, a space agency, was trying to experiment with psychoactive drugs and how it affects your basic neurology? Uh, you can answer that yourself, maybe on another call. But you can see here uh, the spiders were given LSD, speed, marijuana, caffeine, and we can see the normal uh, spider web at the bottom. Which spider web is worse? Which poisons the mind the most? Caffeine, of course, I mean, just look at that web. The results speak for itself. Are you starting to understand why the most repetitive content in all film is coffee? And we'll end, we'll end our talk today with a quick rundown for some clips that I took off the internet today. This is from the Netflix movie, Leave the World Behind with Ethan Hawke and Julia Roberts. 
And of course, we have the coffee mug on the side. This is the opening scene. Julia Roberts, his wife says, I got your coffee over here. I made it just the way you like it. The coffee cup is one imprint. Mentioning the coffee verbally um, through the audio track is a second imprint. This, you can see the timestamps here, 551. We're not far into the movie. The coffee imprints in all movies are usually front loaded in the first 20 minutes of any cinema production. This girl, her dream is to visit the coffee shop, the Central Perk, uh, on the Friends show. The Friends show at the Central Perk is on her iPad over there on the seat, and she verbally asks her dad, when we get back to New York, can you take me to the coffee shop uh, of the Friends show? And of course, Friends did a great job themselves, basically romanticizing coffee at the Central Perk. And there's so many dormant programs, dormant images from Friends inside the coffee shop. This additional image is supposed to trigger the dormant programming. This is where they walk into their Airbnb, Ethan Hawke and Julia Roberts. There is a uh, a bag of coffee in the welcome basket. We have a kettle, which is sort of a psychological priming for coffee. Then we have a percolator coffee machine. We got three images here in one. And then we're only at the seven minute mark of this movie, Netflix movie called Leave the World Behind. 1525, they find a Starbucks and they home in on a star. Here we have Starbucks again, start putting it together with the Starbucks and who's behind it. And then these are two different shots. Julia Roberts at 9, 10 into the movie going to pick up some supplies. We have coffee up here. And you, this is your subconscious. Did you not see it? That's perfectly fine. Your conscious mind would have saw none of this. Your subconscious would have saw all of it, tabulating the content and wanting you to repeat and adopt all these behaviors or ideas as your own they want you on this coffee and here in this scene where I stopped at 1529 because most of the coffee imprints are front loaded on a, any movie in the first 20 minutes, but it quickly switched to alcohol, which also has the same psychoactive effect on the brain. It enhances mind control because alcohol is a poison. Alcohol injures you and injured animals need the herd more. Injured animals comply more to group pressure. Repetition is the group. Repetition is the group. So you can see how much effort goes into your screen productions to get you running east, looking for a sunset, modifying your behavior outside your conscious awareness. So here's the solutions for sidestepping mind control. I'll give you sort of a Cole's note history lesson here. Media was actually an ancient country in the Middle East. It's where Azerbaijan is or Iran is today. This ancient group mastered hijacking human behavior by controlling the repetitive content of what humans take in through their eyes and ears. They used to have stage productions or government announcements. They didn't have a TV or the, the town crier. Whatever they did, they made sure to make sure it was repetitive because that controlled people's behaviors. Your screens were invented by this ancient group and they have always documented their end goals openly. They intend to mind control you via repetitive content toward their end goals. This is old mind control tech, not new tech. Although the delivery of the mind controlling repetitive content is delivered through new tech. You live on a human farming operation, a human bee colony of sorts. We all know how bee farmers work. You make the honey, they steal it and sell it. <laughs> Our cities are bee colonies. I'm not too sure if you're aware, and they do intend to take your honey. This farming operation uses two primary modalities to control the human honey producers. Human farming rule number one. Control the repetitive content in all media, which builds group pressure for us to follow and adopt that repetitive content as our own. Human farming rule number two, use repetitive-based mind control so the humans weaken themselves by consuming every poison under the sun, which makes them more compliant to all forms of fabricated group pressure. This group has a one-two punch. They use standard control of repetitive content. They also use that repetitive content to make you drink and inject and eat poisons, which weakens you 
which increases the effectiveness of the group pressure. Weak humans comply more to group pressure. Poisoned humans are weak humans. Weak and poisoned people comply to a much higher degree to follow the repetitive content on the screens because weak people need the group to feel safe. Healthy people like myself, we do not need the group to feel safe whatsoever unless our lives are in jeopardy. Solution number one, here's your solutions. Your screens are documented military weapons full of negative repetitive content. This is done on purpose. Be very careful. uh, Solution number two, reduce the poisons in your own life as to regain control of your prefrontal cortex. The colonization of your country starts first with the colonization of your mind and your prefrontal cortex. They're two favorite poisons that they riddle throughout the slave camp and they reinforce your consumption through the repetitive content of media are always coffee and always alcohol. This is their one-two punch. This is why alcohol is on the, on the airplane. This is why alcohol is in the mini bar. This is why alcohol is glorified. This is why people give each other wine. They're under mind control. These are the poisons that lubricate the mind control machine inside the human honey colony. Solutions number three, up regulate positive repetitive content in your own life to hack your life in the opposite direction. There's only one form of mind control, repetitive content. Control your repetitive content independently. That's what I do. That's what I teach. If you want to learn this information for free, I will slow drip it to you for free. You have to be on my email list. It's called the Christoph Report. I send it out three to four times a week in an attempt to help the society heal and make sure everybody has a better life, including my, including me, That's one reason I do it. I would like a better life as well, but I can't do it myself. I'm going to need a lot of people's help. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation today. And um, I don't know how to get back to, there we go. I'm going to stop the screen share or I, yes, I just got changed over. So there's the presentation. I hope, uh, I hope no one's wearing their brown pants and I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, thanks so much, Jason. That was quite amazing. And it's interesting that it boils down to something so simple and that we haven't kind of cottoned on to. Um, yeah, it is It is really interesting that um, the whole thing, the, the kind of burgeoning of coffee shops and wine and alcohol. And uh, yeah, I mean, those the pictures of the spider, were incredible, you know, how dysfunctional they became. Yeah, it's all with the, and it's not a guarantee that someone's going to comply if they're having a coffee. Mm. It's it's like a casino. The, the, the people doing this, it's like a gamble. 30% of the population do comply regardless of any other factor. You feed them repetitive content and they seem to follow along. But if you start poisoning the population, you get more compliance. How much more? Sometimes it's dependent on other factors. But the more you poison the society, and it could be Teflon pans, microwave food, uh, baby aspirin, Tylenol, Motrin, fluoride in the toothpaste. If you just pile on the poison, Mm -hmm. you get incrementally more people complying to the group pressure. Mm. Yeah, and... You know, we were just talking yesterday, you know, they've been trying to push fluoride in the water for over 100 years and they don't stop. You know, it's like, just continue whatever the research, whatever the rational kind of nonsense yeah. it is. Yeah. And that that's the, the word, the, the group that we call government, this is how they, 10,000 of them rule 8 billion people. So the human farming manual is not uh, uh, complex. <laughs> It just, they control the repetitive content and they make sure to really dole out the poisons. And when they're really going to make a big jump in illegality, immorality, unethical conduct, and they want us to comply with it, they really do flood us. And that's really what happened in 2020. Uh, This is why they want you to get the fourth application, the fifth application, because every application poisons the body more, weakens the body more, weak humans comply more with the repetitive messaging. 
I have a couple of questions, Jason. Sure, Kim. Um, so it was interesting in that film, when I, and for some reason I can never remember the title of it. The yeah, um, Leave the Junior. World Behind. That's it, yeah. Um, when, when you were talking about the fact that the Gates people built uh, bought um, Starbucks, and mm -hmm. I noticed that Barack and M Michelle Obama were executive producers of that film, uh, would love to know your thoughts on that. Uh, also, what came to me as you were doing the whole presentation was, you know, this thing about AI and transplanting AI technology into human brains. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Yeah, you could see the uh, the clip, you know, this very serious clip about what the government is doing to the public or was doing, you know, with the assassins, the hypnotism and the assassins. Well, you saw Dr. Delgado, who was basically experimenting with a Neuralink in regards to implanting chips in the, in the brains of animals and also in the brains of humans to control their behavior. And what they're trying to do as well is they're trying to make people so sick and so depressed that they would like to sort of merge with technology and say, you know what, I'd like to get in. I don't know if anybody remembers the Matrix and Neo was originally in a red pod of, of goo with all the uh, wires hooked up to him. And basically, this is where they would like to go. They would like us to be so miserable, so sick with all the metabolic breakdowns from all these applications, all these experiments. And they would, they, they're going to make us so miserable. They're going to come out right at the right time and say, you know what? I could take away all your pain and all your misery and all your depression. Could you maybe just merge with AI? Because, you know, your human body so faulty. It can't keep healthy. You're born a sinner. You're not, you don't, your, your birth is just a random happenstance why don't you just get in the red pot of goo and we'll just hook you up to the computer. And if you can make humans so miserable and put in the messages in the films that really lay the repetitive groundwork, a lot of people will, you know, willingly step into the red pot of goo. Like if you were to take away a, even a, a, someone's access to the internet, and then you tell the average North American female that, no, you can't dye your hair anymore because of the climate change. But if we hook you up to the Internet, we can put you in a virtual reality where your hair is blonde all the time and, and your breasts are perky all the time and everything's perfect. So if you take away all the security that people have developed over time here in in our virtual reality and say you no longer have that but you could have it again inside a new virtual reality where you're merged with ai a lot of people would jump at that right that's very scary i, I i'm just shocked at the number of people who are you know want to get merged with ai um so uh, yeah, and, and the uh, about the uh, Obama um, Stargate as uh, Starbucks connection. What what are your thoughts there? Well, there's 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 people in close knit you know societies that share this information openly, and there was a lot more hip, hypnosis based, trance based, what's called alpha brainwave state induction modalities in this movie. Leave the world behind. It was a full hypnosis-based, trance-based download of negative content from start to finish. And people just, you know, pretty well spend their time and their money programming themselves and their kids into, into oblivion, for lack of a better word. So again, part of the recovery here is about understanding that the TV is the vampire most people have invited over the threshold. It will, it will consume uh, their them and their family unless they get rid of it yes and it was interesting that you said that it was obama who reversed that legislation uh, about uh, not having um, mind control for the public and the other thing that was interesting was you mentioned that media was an ancient country i didn't quite understand that and <laughs> and i'm fascinated it got me thinking you know, this word government, government, govern the mind, control the mind. Mm -hmm. Have you done any history, looking back into history of, 
when when this term and the formations of governments really started how long how how far back does it go oh it goes far back there's a good documentary on this old group uh if, if the good documentary is called cult of the medics and it's produced by a canadian mm -hmm. by the name of david whitehead and there is a country called media this will come up pretty quickly on google they don't try and hide it media was a country very old 2000 years old again uh, it's where azerbaijan or iran is today and these are the people that started documenting how to best neurologically and psychologically control people they would just have plays and let's say the hero coming back from war would have a, a red cape and then they'd walk the agora the next day and all the you know tapestry retailers would be like what's really odd is everybody wants a red cape and then say the female would have the you know a nice necklace a very particular necklace and then she would be in the play and then they the person the goldsmith who was selling that particular necklace would be sold out and then they started to put it together humans copy mimic and emulate what they see especially if you add positive energy, positive reinforcement to it. And th this group we deal with have a saying, what's on the screen at noon will be on the street at night. Even the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, released in 2001, was a movie about car theft. And when that movie was released in Burnaby, BC, Canada, car theft went up 70% in the first four days alone. You would never... If you interviewed anybody anywhere, let alone in a movie theater, and asked them if something on the screen could change who they are, what they believe in, or how they act, they would say, absolutely not. But this is what these screens are for. I mean, the cineplex, the word cineplex, this group is also masters of what's called word magic. It's not C-I-N to start cineplex. It's S-I-N. Sin, sin e plex Cineplex in ancient word magic means a magic cluster or hub of sin. And this is what, um, you know, word magic is another part of hypno hypnosis. We don't have time to get into, but this group lays their fingerprints all over our society. It's, if you understand how they work, it's a lot easier to protect yourself, protect your family and sidestep their attempts to control you. But it's it's really quite shocking, you know, when you really start to, to if you really start to think, OK, there's this group of people who are doing all this stuff. It's planned. It's deliberate. It's been going on for decades and centuries. And then you sit down and you think, why? What you know, what's their end game? Why would somebody want to do this or people want to do this? This this is really the crux of the, the matter, isn't it? Is what's the end game? And, and, and for a lot of people, it's. It's shocking to to actually face this reality. What advice would you give to people who are suddenly being faced with these facts that they, you know, maybe for the first time and the veil is being taken away and there are many lenses that have to be taken away because it's too overwhelming to have that done all at once? Yeah, most people will run back to the coffee and the alcohol when they hear me talk, but that's okay. It's like a first step. But this group has does this on repetitive cycles. This is not their first rodeo. This is not the first reset. And asking why they do it is like asking a, a beekeeper why he keeps the bees. Why does he keep the bees? Because he wants the honey. And the bees is the only thing that can produce it from. And then he sells the honey and, you know, maintains his life here on this planet. So if someone wants to start getting into this slowly, understanding this to a little bit of a greater degree so they don't scare themselves back into the uh, their comfort comas. Again, my email system or my <laughs> emails would be a great place to start. Uh, but there's these, these things I work with called the five pillars of strength. And they're the things that are necessary if you want to stand strong against this group. You need physical strength. You need emotional strength, intellectual. You need uh, financial and you need, I don't know if I mentioned intellectual. Oh, no, spiritual, spiritual. These are the five pillars. And 
if you need to start somewhere and start small, you start with the physical because the physical is the base foundation of all the other pillars of strength so they can sit soundly so that you can get up and literally move against this evil. So if someone wants to start, start with your physical strength. You don't have to go out and protest. You don't have to find one of these high-end criminals and try to yell at them as they go by in their motorcade. The war will be won and lost in your own household. What you eat, what you stick in your mouth. There's a hole in your face called a mouth, and they know how to make you stick poison in there. They really do, because that's one of their primary agendas. So if you work with me, you can start fortifying your, your behavioral pathways to resist their mind control, to destroy yourself by your own hand. And then you can take in the positive repetition, the best book. You only need one book. The best book ever written on how to truly be healthy, to increase your physical pillar of strength is by Paul Check, his C-H-E-K, and it's How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. That's the book you want. That's where you start. It's your cupboards in your kitchens where your th this battle with evil will be uh, won and lost. Because if you can't control what you put in your mouth, what can you control? And if you poison yourself by your own hand, you're under mind control. Jason, Brilliant. your email for everyone. People are asking in the chat for your email. Yeah, it's info at jchristoff.com. And I will show them how to build the other four pillars of strength easy, which is pretty easy once you get the physical pillar of strength sort of upright and uh, make sure it's strong enough to hold up the other four. Yeah, Jason, um, there's been lots of comments in the chat as well. People are really raving about what you're saying. They are absolutely relating to it. Um, and also um, people have been adding, you know, the, the list of poisons is endless, isn't it, people? It's like they just if you look at the chat, it's like, oh, my God, yes. This is like the horror story, isn't it? And and I think the, <laughs> um, the you know, it's so important what you're talking about. Um, I have a I I was shocked at one point when you showed that clip of the bull. Uh, I immediately saw the same movements that we've been seeing on clips of people who spin round and round and then they fall over dead uh, mm -hmm. in after the vaccine and it was exactly the same movement. Uh, I was like, whoa! That gave me that gave me chills all down my spine. I'm afraid, but I don't know if other people saw that as well. But uh, the the uh, email is on the is on the chat. If anyone wants to go there, info at J Christoph. And remember, Christoph is two F's. All right, Christoph at the end, C H R I S T, as in Christ, and then off O F F. I hope that's not a meaning for you because I'm a devout Christian. So I'm just hoping you're not off in Christ. I don't think you are at all. I think you're talking about what we're meant to be. So there's a, yeah. it's a let's get off. off. Yeah, off actually just means repeating in sort of ancient code. So uh, yeah. anything with off at the end means repeating and then you put the first word. So Christ off actually means the repeating Christ. And yeah. Christ actually was a title. It wasn't uh, Jesus's last name. Uh, Christ means healer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and because we've got um, you know the 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 media, the the Bible mentions the Midians. They they're actually in the Bible. You can find them in the Bible. I'm sure Delinda will tell us more about that if we had time. Um, but also, I was struck how uh, you know even in Revelations, you know the centerpiece of Revelations in the Christian uh, Testament is that that you know that we will all have to exceed to having the mark of the beast upon us, which is a sign on the forehead, <laughs> which is exactly where they put the AI imprint in the, in the, in the, in the bull. You saw he had the thing on there. That's where they're hoping to put it. And, and on the wrist, the sign that the mark of the beast in Revelations means that you have something placed on your forehead and something, well, we'll be talking about ID, ID um, stuff in there. It's like, this was predicted 2000 years ago. People knew this was going on through divine revelation, but I'm just saying, wow, you know, how close are we to really, really intense times? Thank you for your, thank you for your speech and your, your presentation, Jason. Absolutely amazing.
You're welcome, Jerry. You know, Revelations, there's, I don't know the exact line, but it says, by pharmakia, all nations will be deceived. And pharmakia just means poison. And again, this group, this isn't their first reset. It's not their first rodeo. When you want to, I mean, even the fleur de lis that you see so often on the French coat of arms and things like this, this actually goes back to the Egyptian blue Nile lily, which was also another hallucinogenic compound, would alter brain function. They would use it at public cer government ceremonies to damage the brain, make it weak and make the people who are literally high thousands of years ago make them more compliant to repetitive-based mind control. They've been doing this a long time, and of course, coffee is one of their favorites. Not only does coffee disturb brain function, as we saw clearly in that very short YouTube clip, uh, coffee really gets the best uh, honey produced. The, the, workers are, the worker bees are very uh, busy, <laughs> busy bees when they're on the caffeine. Alcohol does the same thing, and they've tried the alcohol. They've tried to, they used to have wine to start the day not too long ago, but it inhibits uh, honey production down at the human beehive. So coffee is one of their favorites because it not only inhibits brain function and puts people, makes people more compliant to repetitive-based mind control, it really keeps them active on the job and also shuts down their ability to dream of a better day. This is why coffee is notoriously the start of most people's day as they as they wander to a job they don't enjoy and who taught them to take a job they don't enjoy the government school system repetition won the day there uh, makes no sense when you have a, deci a decision to make between being an entrepreneur and working for someone else sort of like the decision between giving yourself orders for the rest of your life and being given orders Someone's going to tell you how many vacations you can take a year. And everybody says, well, I'll just take a job. You know, when humans are doing things that are completely illogical or rational en masse, you know repetition-based mind control is definitely at play. I, I wondered, I just want to bunt in on this because I've noticed I've, I have an instinctive intolerance for things and I'm not always right, but mostly I'm right. And I was always intolerant of TV and I was always in, I became very suspicious of AI when it, even when it was first, first presented and, and, and as with the, the suspicion around pharmacology, actually. Um, but also I'm just thinking about the recent interest in ayahuasca type uh, hallucinogenics mm -hmm. in um, in very alternative circles um, for helping people, as it were, open up. And I've always had a deep mistrust. I've actually seen and heard some very good responses from it. So it, the evidence doesn't fit my intuitive mistrust. But I'm now wondering whether it's now becoming kind of over the counter that we should be able to use small micro dosages of LSD, of ayahuasca type substances. And yeah. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that, Jason, because I have always been suspicious of this. Absolutely. This is an old game. This is an old game. This, when, when you want to conquer a group, send in the drugs. And if you want to take down a counterculture, send in the drugs as well. There was a, a gentleman who interviewed me, very popular author his name eludes me at the moment but his book was the tavistock Indus institute and he recounted like at woodstock the uh cia which is sort of the royal family's wing inside the U united states government they came into woodstock they supplied all the lsd they supplied all the marijuana and they also removed 80 percent of the portable toilets as well to increase to increase the toxicity in the site um, this group knows what they're doing. If you increase the poison, whether it's feces or urine or drugs, you're going to basically, you can disarm people. Weak people comply. And there's so many incidences of this where this group, the Opium Wars, where they invaded China, the UK Royals, this is their this is their handbook. They invaded China, they took over the entire country of China. They would just go by in the boats, they wouldn't even land on the docks, they just throw the opium bags and just let the people destroy themselves. It's exactly what's going on today. 
uh, the ayahuasca, the marijuana, all these hallucinogens, the psilocybin, and I've done the psilocybin myself. It's sure, there's some people that might have uh, got some positive benefits, but in general, I've heard a lot of stories that it's just the same group infiltrating true, true circles or the awakened movement and throwing in it, just their old tricks. Again, you got to be really aware poisons degrade strength strength weak humans are more compliant to mind control oh this is so interesting i'm sorry to hog the show with with other panelists but you know the role of my my obsession my obsession my 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 commitment my pathway is to bring human touch on a very simple way back to soothing the nervous system and to bringing us in many ways, back into resilience, back into our prefrontal cortex. And it's so natural and so simple that when humans touch each other, we have a chemical change in the brain that, that causes us to be calm and, and to make, you know, for mm -hmm. most of us. Yeah. And, and I, I'm just thinking about the contrast between the natural and the, and the, um, and the as it were, the, the drug-induced uh, stuff. I, I'm not sure I'm going to give up coffee, though. I have to say, I'm really upset at what you've said about coffee. <laughs> I, I want to persecute the hell out of you for it. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes uh, we tell people, you know, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And uh, even if someone's doing those uh, hallucinogenic drugs, I've done a lot of mushrooms in my life. I'll tell you, it didn't calm my nervous system down. I was doing shamanic doses with my friends. I didn't really have a good shaman to guide me. But if it helps people, great. But just I've met people that done 30 ayahuasca tours, and they're 10 times more messy than when they started. So I'm, I do apologize as well, Jerry, about the coffee. But uh, I do talk about coffee often uh, on my on the Christoph report. And if you ever stop, you'll find, you'll find definitely your thinking uh, will greatly increase your IQ will greatly increase. But I mean, some, you're already, you know, you're already doing God's work. Sometimes it's about getting comfortable with taking it to another level. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jason, for coming on. I hope we can have you back again because I've got so many questions that I can't even, <laughs> I can't even begin without, you know, without doubling the time that we have. Yeah. I, so, you know, open up a whole can of worms about ancient groups just controlling our repetitive contact and poisoning us back into the Stone Age. And uh, this is how we're ruled. This is how we've done most of everything. Well, it's why I went to university. It's why. I even took a flu shot when I was 26, almost died. The, the repetitive contents, the reason why I took the flu shot. And I did really almost die because my lawyer had to come to my bedside to uh, take my last will and testament. So, I mean, we can get thrown in re very evil directions. We think it's our own decision. It's not. <laughs> and uh, if we want to thrive in 2024, we're going to have to control our own behavior, control our own repetitive content and know that uh, it's going to be like when you quit coffee or quit alcohol or, or quit junk food or quit watching TV or quit pornography, I'll tell you, this is a rite of passage. This is a warrior's passage. Don't step on the path unless you know this is going to be the biggest fight of your life because, you, the, you know, the, the biggest inhibiting factor in someone's ascension and evolution is themselves. They don't have to go out and fight the world. They just got to fight the programming and know that the battlefield is going to be sweaty and even bloody when you go and try to become a better person when all the programming you've absorbed is all negative. So if people need support on those quests, I, I give it in my uh, email system. Yeah. yeah, I love what you say about starting where you are, use what you have. <laughs> in one step at a time. And I just think that's so important, especially because our children are all being subjected to this. And, um, you know, until we can actually change it ourselves, then I'm not sure how much we can help our children. And, and that's what I really am concerned about as well. Absolutely. I mean, when I used to be here in the house and I'd cook my daughter i mean I, I cook with i cook her now everything that she's eating while i'm here but when I, when she was young i would cook her you know uh 
organic meat in the morning, pan-fried cauliflower and pan-fried broccoli, sauerkraut, fish oil. She drink fish oil out of the, uh, out of the, out of the bottle. And then she, she'd go for a sleepover and they'd offer her waffles and they say, could you pan fry me some cauliflower or broccoli? So humans can get used to whatever repetitive content they're given. You just got to lay down the good content. And even if they have the bad content in printing where they're doing negative stuff, you saw how quick in the, in the Justin Williams hack of the three teenagers, see how quick the programming can change. If someone's been smoking for 20 years, that's why hypnotists can stop them overnight at some stage hypnosis show because he knows how to get into the subconscious mind. Hypnosis is very powerful for changing the programming. The comments in the chat are just wild. I mean, people are loving what you've said, Jason, and they're just really appreciating the depth and the scope, I feel like you've gone very, very deep, but you've also gone very, very wide. So, you know, and that wasn't a hypnotic attempt to make you all become Christians, by the way. That, that, I, literally was just, I just think you have covered such a broad array of subjects, but you've also gone incredibly deep. And I really appreciate you for all that you've learned and, and your presentation. Now, you're very welcome. Just let people should know it's about progress. It's not about perfection. A lot of my clients will go two weeks without coffee, then find themselves in the side of a bag of coffee, like a gopher in the side of a bale of hay. It's still a win. They went two weeks. It might have been the only two weeks they stopped. So we'll take the win. And once they get out of that bag of coffee and get away from Juan Valdez, then we'll start walking the right right hand path again. And that's just how it goes. So I've just got one question here that I've seen in the chat. Um, I didn't realize there were questions there. Um, why do they not want us having nicotine as it seems very beneficial as a herb and taxes on cigarettes are going up much faster than alcohol? Well, I mean, they do want us on any poison. The way this works is any poison will do, and they'll give you all the sort of fake freedoms, right? You're like you're free to drink, you're free to smoke, you're free to vape, you're free to smoke. Like in Canada, of course, the marijuana is legal coast to coast. And they actually legalized cocaine, fentanyl, and heroin in British Columbia, Canada, and for a very obvious reasons, if you've listened to this entire thing. They don't push as much smoking now, but it is there. And uh, they push the vaping. They don't care what movie you see. They don't care what self-destructive modality you pick you get all the freedoms in the areas that don't count we call it the free dumb plan it's r f r e e dash d u m b where everything that makes you dumb is provided free or nearly free by the state and they don't care which uh, pick your poison they don't care as long as you're toxic in some way there's a better chance that you're going to comply with the repetitive content and all the other modalities of mind control. So still 20% of the population still smoke cigarettes. 20%. Yeah, and, and we haven't even talked about sugar. I mean, my goodness, that's just got to be one of the biggest toxins. Yeah, it's it degrades everything. It, it can give you brain damage. There's a Dr. Amen, um, very famous neurological expert that I've seen him many times on the internet. A lot of his talks have 10 million, 15 million views. I don't agree with everything he says, but he'll openly state caffeine and sugar, alcohol, give you brain damage. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take that because that's true. And if people would hear this message more from their local doctor, their local doctor is telling them, yeah, alcohol is healthy in moderation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mark Hyman Another doctor, I like a lot of his stuff, don't agree with everything. But Dr. Mark Hyman just let out uh, some a meta-analysis a couple of weeks ago proving this is completely false. And this isn't the only meta-analysis. This is this has been known in all the research for a very long time. No amount of alcohol is healthy. In fact, one ounce of alcohol lessens your life by like four minutes is an absolute guarantee. You're gonna it doesn't elongate your life, but what would people expect? when the whole system we live under runs on mind control and poisons. So don't expect, like, don't, don't let it shock you that you're consuming poison. And then the lie that got you to consume the poison had some kind of positive attribute. Don't be surprised when you discover that. 
Yeah, time for people to wake up. Yeah. Sure. Well, they got to wake up six feet above, or they're going to wake up six feet below. At this point, these are the options. Mm. Oh well, look, it's been an amazing conversation, and thank you for your presentation, Jason. Um, You're the, obviously, you've got lots and lots of comments in the chat, and people are very engaged. And I think it's a uh, it is good to understand like that thing, start where we are, that, you know, like these are the sim these are the things that are getting to us. I mean, we've got so many different levels of everything else, but yeah, if we can get the nice clean slate and be fresh and make nice spider webs. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we should be. Absolutely, Ed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Emma's going to come on because um feel We've we've been on a while now, but uh, she's going to tell us about um, the next event. And um, yeah, we'd we'd very much like to hear more from you, Jason. And thank you for your information and your contact. I'm sure people would really love to, you know, just immerse more and just show it to friends and their family and even to the teenagers, you know, and protect uh, the children. Yeah, always a pleasure, and thanks for having me. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason. That was really great to, to listen to and to hear your follow-up conversation, everybody afterwards, and to follow the, the comments in the chat. We've been streaming. Um, we have the webinar on our website, but we've also been streaming to Rumble and to Facebook and to Twitter and lots of great comments, everybody, um, everywhere. People are very engaged with this, so it would be great to have you come back sometime. Um, hopefully, I, I, I caught it all. I might have been distracted a little bit by my giant mug of coffee here while I was <laughs> sitting here. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, thank you to everybody who watched this and everybody who shared it. We had great numbers on all the places that we were streaming and there's been a lot of questions about if this will be recorded. Um, yes, all of our, our content and our webinars are recorded and you can always find them on the Mind Health Committee website on the World Council for Health website. So that's worldcouncilforhealth.org slash mindhealth. So this will always be up there and you can share it um, straight from that place and all the places that we streamed to, it'll stay there as well, um, unless the the uh, social media tech overlords don't want it to be there and remove one of them, but it will always be on our website. So you can always go back there and find it. Um, next week, we do not have an event because we are off for a holiday break, um, as well as the first week of January. We will be back on the 10th of January for a webinar with Patrick. And the following week, we will have a webinar on the 17th of January with Kim. And then we will get back into our regular schedule. Um, regular schedule. Um, you can always check on our Mind Health Committee page. Again, that was worldcouncilforhealth.org slash mindhealth for our upcoming events. Every time we schedule something, we'll get it right on that page so you can stay connected there. Um, and I think that's all. So I hope all of you on our committee have a wonderful holiday break over the next two, two weeks. And everybody that's watching with us right now and everybody that's watching the recording, um, have a great holiday. And we will be back in January. And let's do Jerry's wave. Everybody wave, wave to each other and we will end this live stream. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.